or the disrespect before you play back button check. Button check. What is up, Butt Check family? Welcome back to yet again a beautiful morning. It is the weekend and we done made it, but it is evil weekend and we done made it. Well, most of us did it. We're probably at home watching this, but either way, it's here. There's so much damn action. I literally got, I don't even know what to talk about first, but we're gonna go ahead and check these buttons and we're probably gonna either post two today, two tomorrow. I don't know, we got a lot to talk about. Expect a lot of damn content over this weekend. Either way, sub button right there, chapters down below, wanna skip around, watch it all. Either way, let's go. All right, now into them first set of Evo started off crazy as hell, buttons to be checked. So we knew that this was the largest Evo ever, right? The attendance was off the charts. People are flying in from everywhere, obviously, and pool started this morning, which by the time you're watching this, this is actually Friday the 4th. And pool started this morning and it was crazy. You saw people posting everywhere saying, I think even Mena, right? He posted saying, uh, is there something for players for the 10 a.m.? This line is gonna get me disqualified. Punk posted as well saying, bro, the line to get an Evo venue is insane. I hope I can make it to my pools in time after seeing this. If you don't play 10 a.m., it's probably best to leave the line and let the 10 a.m. pool players go in first. And I can only imagine, I've been to Evo twice and that line in, in on regular Evo, I'm not even talking about this Evo, which is record breaking, the line is hella long. Imagine how it is now. People are saying like it's almost to the food because there's like actually like a restaurant or certain food court, right? It's not too far from it. And I think Punk even updated it saying now it's past that, like it's to the elevators. It's a lot of damn people. But then Mena updated saying he was in and I believe Evo ended up doing something to where everybody was able to make it on time. And then somebody by the name of Matt responds to that with a comment that you might be thinking. It says, don't competitors, especially high profile ones, get their own way in? That's crazy if not. Punk responds to that saying, no, it doesn't exist in the F you see, as much as people want to believe it, we wait in line just like everyone else. Matt responds saying insane, others add to it saying crazy that they're also just humans who happen to be better than everyone else, they'll live Matt, don't worry. Matt responds saying, I guess celebrity safety measures should just not exist then, musicians, etc. Big Smoke responds to that saying, if you think top players in fighting games are celebrities, you think you might have the wrong idea about our little community. So that's an interesting point, right? Especially if you've never been to Evo or let's say like a huge FGC event, you might think that competitors have their own separate entrance. Hell, you might think that punk or people that are well known don't have to wait in line. Then he goes on to sarcastically say, I guess celebrity measures shouldn't take place then. And then others respond saying, well, we're, they're not celebrities. And if you think that, you might have the wrong idea about our little community. On one hand, I guess I could see how it would be safe to assume that there might be separate entrances for somebody that's already registered and the pools are about to start versus everybody else that hasn't registered or maybe playing the pools later. But I think the bigger topic is the celebrity issue, right? Where he talks about, well, if you're a well-known player, I thought you would have found a way or have your own separate entrance. Punk responds saying, nah, that doesn't exist in the FGC. We gotta wait in line like everybody else. So that makes sense. Fair is fair, equal is equal. Right, how could you argue with that? I guess the only thing I might pull back, I don't know if this is considered a hot take or not, is when he said, you might have the wrong idea about our little community. For one, I honestly don't think that our community is little anymore. I think at one time we could say that, yeah, we're just a little old FGC over here, grassroots, and we're still kind of like that, but let's be real. It is growing and booming in a way like like never before and I, I don't know this might even seem like a super off topic you know what I'm saying but I, I just want us to start getting out of that mode out of that train of thought to where oh we're just little old FGC and start thinking bigger bigger if I could talk because now we're swimming with the big fish now we have all these huge companies now we have this big money and it seems to only be getting bigger in order to get to that next level that we really do have to start seeing each other or ourselves it's not so much the little guy in the fish tank anymore but an actual fucking shark I don't know I think I just think that our community deserves way more respect and recognition from esports in general. So anyway, just some food for thought, not trying to fire shots at anybody or anything like that, just trying to see how I see the FGC growing. But let's also be real, and let me know if you agree or disagree with this. I think we've definitely seen pro player privilege throughout our time in the FGC. You know what I'm saying? I think that goes with anybody, with any damn genre or sport or fame or anything like that. Not trying to say that it applies here and all the pro competitions or anything like that, but I think it's been sprinkled throughout our experience if you've been in the FGC long enough. Obviously, that's not the case right here in the Evo line. How y'all feeling? Let me know. All right, now into the next set of hype matches and disqualification 
buttons that need to be checked. All right, so reversal, and I'll put their information on the screen. Global platform for fighting game content, online and offline events. So they were doing a throwdown, right? Big ass, and it was actually Thursday, so the day before uh, Evo started, saying, announcing the main card event for the reversal cross TNS Salty Sweets. Two legends throwing down for the first time in Street Fighter VI. That's true, right? We've been saying it for so long. We've been waiting. We've been seeing like USA, North America, playing North America to death when it comes to Street Fighter VI and everybody else playing everybody else, but this is the first time that we've been able to see our pros actually play each other from all around the world at this year's EVO, in Street Fighter VI, that is. Okay, so back to this. It says, two legends throwing down for the first time ever in Street Fighter VI. You got Mena and you got Big Bird. A lot of people picking both of these guys, one of them definitely to win EVO this year. So they throw down and who do you think took it? Who do you think? If I had to guess, I would have said Big Bird, right? but you would be surprised because it looks like it went down to the damn wire. It was a nail biter, Mena took it home. Check it out. Did not end here on this. And look at this, Mena RD. Activates, level two is gonna jump, forcing Big Bird to be on the defensive stretch. No! <laughs> what a reaction from Big Bird. Big All damage. Right. He gets the mix afterwards as well. And he's gonna burn himself. Oh my god! No! Oh my god, what happened? He was not ready I've for this one! I've got no idea what the frames on that were at all! Not a clue! Definitely a situation you're not used to! Get oh, away! Oh, he Big gets caught in person! Oh, and he's oh, oh, the oh, Mena RD was not asleep at the wheel! He said it's his first 10 hour day at a tournament! And he's played another 3 hours since then! 13 hours in! In the 19th game, the final round, the final interaction, and he was ready to throw the drive impact as everyone should be in this game. So that's what's up, man. That was dope. Now, anything, that doesn't obviously mean that men is going to win everything, but damn, he's, he's strong as ever. There's, oh, this year's Evo is so hype. I've been watching some of the... Uh, the stream for Street Fighter 6, it's amazing. There's so much going on, it's hard to catch everything. That's what I was saying, expect multiple videos over the next several days, you know, we gotta check all these buttons. On the other side, on the brighter side, none other than Mike Ross is back in the game and apparently he's top, he's a top player. Well, he's top 5,000. Because he posted this right here saying, made it out of my pools and winners, I'm top 5,000 in the world. Check out the clip. So there you go, some good ass times happening at EVO, but unfortunately we also got some DQs and some badass times. This happens to fall on Chris Tatarian, which this is huge, right? Because he was coming in EVO hot. He was like one of North America's best players at the time in Street Fighter VI. The man's been doing damage online. Not only that, but he's been doing damage with tournaments. I believe he won a trip through that like Chipotle. Remember there was like Chipotle challenge or something like that? His team, if I'm not mistaken, was also chosen and they won a free trip to Evo. He won a whole free trip to Evo only to get disqualified, damn. So this is how it starts off. Apparently recently he was in Armenia. He comes home early back to America, right? To make sure he was in time for Evo. When he gets home, he realizes that his car was stolen. He updates right here saying, update, my car was just found deserted, engine stolen. I'll be driving my sister's car to Evo, pulls tomorrow at 11 a.m., so I'll be hitting the road early morning. This is the first Evo where I'm arriving late and I can't fully stay because it's the first day of school on Monday. So obviously that sucks. That's the last thing you wanna hear. But he asks that saying, fuck man, things just keep getting worse for me. Is there anything I can do to get a Saturday pool for Evo or possibly at a later time pool today. I can't make it in time for 11 a.m. pools. I wouldn't be able to arrive until about 11.30 to 12, the latest at EVO. Okay, so not much further after 11, right? And then apparently the FGC, once again, Mike to the Ross, tries to lend a hand right here saying, come to my pool at 12 p.m. tomorrow, the pool uh, C617. If you miss yours, let's talk to the bracket runner. Chris, of course, responds saying, thank you so much, my bro. And then even Marn. Marn responds saying, don't let Mike get DQ'd. Try to take my spot if they allow you to, I'm not even there. 
Chris responds saying, that might be even more optimal, Mike, since Marn isn't even at Evo. Then Chris updates again saying, I've emailed support um, at the general manager regarding my situation. I'm trying to switch my pool with Marn since he's not attending Evo. His pool begins at 5 p.m. and mine at 11 a.m. Due to my car being stolen, I'm not able to attend at 11 a.m., but I can make it by five, please help. Then he follows up again saying, I know it's still early, but I haven't heard anything yet. Then sadly, he updates again saying, just found out that Evo cannot put me in Marn's bracket. I'm fucking devastated right now. I legit left Armenia a week early to get to Evo in time. I come home, my car is stolen. I deal with the police for two days before this shit. And now this, I don't know what to say, man. Why? I tried my hardest to make it in time, but wasn't able to get switched to a different pool. I understand why Evo couldn't do it. I don't blame them. I'm just confused as to why all this had to happen to me in the past 72 hours. Thank you for believing me and supporting me through all. You guys are the best. Then he tags Chipotle as well, saying thank you to Chipotle for everything they did to get me out here. I appreciate you. Damn, so how much does that suck? Like through Chipotle, he was able to get to Evo. Not really sure how it works. I don't know if they bought the original ticket or if it's like expenses paid and whatnot, but you know, they helped him out only to get disqualified. Come all the way back from Armenia, car stolen, gotta borrow a car, get there late. Hopefully, you know, people are trying to help you. Then they're like, nah, you can't switch. But I will say, at least he had a, a positive attitude about it. He's not like, you know, just firing shots at everybody because at the end of the day, what are you gonna do? Damn, this is a tough L. This is a tough ass L to hold. And another thing that comes to my mind is like this whole Evo was for the best of the best. We all finally from around the world get to play each other in Street Fighter VI. And Chris T was definitely one of the heavy hitters when it came to this game because this dude's been hot lately. And now America doesn't have one of their best in this game to compete this year. That sucks. Because if anything, like I said, the main reason why I've been so excited about this year's Evo is because I want to see finally who's the best of the best at this damn game. So anyway, there y'all have it. How you feeling? Let me know. That it is, ladies and gents. Definitely let me know what is going on. Evo, like I said, there might be another video dropping today, later today, because we got so much. Or it might be tomorrow morning. Might be two today, two tomorrow. I don't know, but a lot is coming. Please stay tuned. Check these buttons. Like, subscribe. Thank you for helping the channel grow. Patrons, love y'all. Everybody that tagged me in the story, thank you so much, man. There's so much coming out. And like I said, it, it's literally one of those, it's a good problem because I'm like, I don't even know where to start, you know? So thank you guys for the amazing love. We will see you soon. Definitely. We're going to see you soon. And as always, I don't know what it is, but I know it's about to get better. Love y'all forever. Peace. Blah, blah, blah. Subscribe. Those were some great reveals, but I have to say there's nothing better then free burritos, you heard it correctly from me because over the course of this weekend, Chipotle will be giving away over 40,000, yes, you heard me correctly, 40,000 free burritos and bowls through text to win giveaways. You do not want to miss out on this opportunity. So it actually worked. Being the Mexican that I am, I heard the word free and burrito and I had a, I had a copy and it worked. I honestly thought it was only gonna work for the people in Vegas right now at Evo, but nah, it works for everybody. Hope y'all got yours, shit.